Inside in America First. Today is Biden's 100th day in office, as you know, since taking the oath. He has signed more than 40 executive orders, reversing as much of what Trump did as fast as he possibly could. He created a historic crisis at the southern border, fueled the racial divide and anti-police rhetoric that is destroying American cities. And here is how he described the events of January 6th during his first address to Congress last night. 100 days since I took the oath of office and lifted my hand off our family Bible and inherited a nation, we all did, that was in crisis. The worst pandemic in a century, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. Now, after just 100 days, I can report to the nation, America is on the move again. Sure. What a joke of a comment, though. Worse since the Civil War. Imagine if you had lost a family member in 9-11. Hear a comment like that. A bunch of guys running around with flag sticks outside the Capitol, going inside, taking pictures, stealing Nancy Pelosi's gavel. Worst thing that's ever happened to the country, right? Joke. Joining us now, Missouri Governor, uh, former Missouri Governor, I should say, Eric Greitens, a former Navy SEAL who is also running for Senate in Missouri. Sir, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, Rob, great to be on with you, man. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, your thoughts on the claim about uh, January 6th and how far the left has taken this story. Well, look, look, Rob, it's just sad. It's sad when the left is trying to erase American history and you have Joe Biden, who's clearly forgotten it. On 9-11, I was in Navy SEAL training when the Twin Towers came down. Over 3,000 Americans lost their lives that day. And as all of your viewers remember, thousands more lost their lives in the global war on terror. Not to mention, you look back at World War II, my grandfather was on the USS Enterprise when Pearl Harbor was attacked. 2,400 Americans died that day. And yet, Joe Biden's going to compare that to Nancy Pelosi's false, failed drive-by impeachment attempt of President Trump again with all of the lies that were pushed by the propaganda press. It's just clear that this is a president who's out of touch with American history and core American values. That's well said. You know, he continues to push the left's agenda that this country is racist. Yeah. Um, which is another very, very dangerous line that they're pushing for a reason. Here's what he claims is the most lethal terror threat to our country. Take a listen to this. We won't ignore what our intelligence agency have determined to be the most lethal terrorist threat to the homeland today. White supremacy is terrorism. <laughs> I mean, you can't make it up. Here's Tim Scott's rebuttal to uh, the president's speech. A hundred years ago, kids in classrooms were taught the color of their skin was their most important characteristic. And if they looked a certain way, they were inferior. Today, kids are being taught that the color of their skin defines them again. I get called Uncle Tom and the N-word by progressives, by liberals. Just last week, a national newspaper suggested my family's poverty was actually privilege because a relative owned land generations before my time. Democrats jumped all over him for mentioning moments of racism he's experienced, but saying that America is not racist. Senator Scott does not want to be considered a victim, and the Democrats, the left, hates him for that. What's your right. response? Right. Look, I think Senator Scott's remarks were spot on. And the fact is, this is a country where at our best, we've always brought people together. And I will tell you, you know, I had an honor to serve in the United States Navy. America's military is the most well-integrated institution in the history of the planet. Everybody came together and we served our country. People were willing to put their lives on the line for our country. And we did it because we loved love America because we love our neighbors and we recognize our neighbors aren't perfect. Our country isn't perfect, but people were willing to serve because we loved our country and we brought people together. Now you have a left supported by a propaganda press, which is always trying to divide people, 
always trying to divide Americans and pit them against each other. And what we need to have is leaders who are willing to put America first. Those policies, President Trump's policies, worked for Americans. They work for this country, and that's what we need to get back to. Couldn't agree more. You're in a race yourself. You're running for Senate in Missouri with a MAGA platform. Yes. Trump has endorsed you. Kind of give us the 30-second spiel here about why you are the man for the job. Well, I, I am. I'm the America First candidate uh, in this race. We've been honored to have the support from so many folks on President Trump's team. Uh, Rob, you had Kimberly Guilfoyle uh, yep. on your on your show. She has become our national chair. She's doing an incredible job. And the reason why we have such tremendous grassroots support across the state of Missouri, the reason why President Trump's pollster Tony Fabrizio found that we were at 44 and our closest opponent was at nine, was for the the very simple reason that the people of Missouri and Americans in general, they recognize that now is the time for fighters. We need to have people who are willing to stand up to the establishment, take on the swamp, take on the propaganda press, and take on the left. That's what I did as a Navy SEAL. That's what I did when I came home from Iraq after my team was hit by a suicide truck bomb wow. and I went to work serving my fellow veterans. It's what I did as governor and it's what I'm going to do for the people of Missouri uh, when I have the honor to serve them. As their United States Senator. Okay, well said. Former Missouri Governor Eric Greitens running for Senate in Missouri. Sir, thank you so much for the time. Good to see you. Appreciate you, Rob. Thank you, okay. sir. All right. Uh, look, it, it, the speech went over an hour and, and, and it was boring. I was, you know, I'm, I'm amazed I stayed awake as long as I did. And Joe Biden didn't give a damn. He didn't want our applause. It was a speech that was directed to the Democrats, and it was, we are hard left, the socialist regime is here. And I think that's one of the reasons the speech was so boring, is there was nothing, it was so left-wing that there was nothing for, for any reasonable person to applaud for. Next up, the New York Times with a hilariously numbskulled article in anticipation of Biden's speech last night. Here's the headline. As Biden presents his expansive safety net plan, Republicans are not offering a comprehensive alternative. Here's a quote. As President Biden rolls out his far-reaching $1.8 trillion plan to expand access to education and child care, Republicans are not expected to present their own alternative package, instead arguing that such an ambitious expansion of the social safety net is unnecessary and harmful to the economy. It appears the Times has become so liberal they don't even know what a conservative is anymore. In what universe would anyone expect Republicans to offer any alternative to a bill designed to spend trillions of dollars on education and child care entitlements? The alternative is, we don't want any of this garbage. We have watched this country get dragged further and further to the left for years. And that's just the status quo for our current media. That's how they think this country works. There's two options in their minds, moving extreme left or just moving kind of left. It would seem perhaps the Republican Party learned something from Donald Trump, how to grow a spine and how to hold the line. Just because you live in America doesn't mean your neighbors owe you a babysitter and a college education. Next up, good old Twitter, the most partisan big tech corporation that we have, allowing Uncle Tim to trend for hours after Senator Tim Scott had the audacity to tell Americans the truth that they don't live in a racist country, no matter how much Democrats want you to think that we do. It took Twitter 12 hours before they finally removed a very racist trend. A spokesperson for Twitter blamed an algorithm for allowing the hashtag to trend and said they allow trends to happen until more information is provided on them, like they didn't get what it was. Total BS, they're so full of it. The best part though is watching progressive white people excoriate a black man who was born to a single mother and became a US Senator, telling us that this country clearly, when you look at his story and so many others, this country clearly is not racist. Even MSNBC's Joy Reid chimed in today on Twitter, retweeting a bunch of people who were slamming Tim Scott. Again, is so priceless. Let's be objective for a moment. A black U.S. senator says America is not racist. A black millionaire TV host says America is definitely racist. Who do you believe? One of these two makes perfect sense, and the other makes millions of dollars playing a victim on TV. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.